Shalom. Welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumadi, and in this video we'll talk about Parashat Korah, where we read about Korah's rebellion. Parashat Korah uh, refers to this portion of the Bible in book, the book of Numbers chapter 16 through chapter 18. Now we'll talk about the rebellion of Korah, Dathan and Abiram, Dathan and Abiram, uh, and a test that was conducted uh, in order to determine whether Korah was qualified uh, for the uh, for the thing that he was claiming uh, through offering of incense. We'll talk about uh, how earth swallowed Korah and company uh, go alive uh, into, into the earth, basically. Earth swallowed them. Uh, we'll also look at Aaron's staff, Aharon's staff, blossoming and yielding almonds. And finally, we'll talk about the sons of Korah to whom the Psalms are addressed or given, so they actually sung the Psalms. Let's begin with Korah, Datan, and Aviram. In the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 1, we read, Vayikach Korah ben Yishar ben Kehat. This is Kohat, translated as Kohat ben Kehat ben Levi, the son of Levi. Vedatan ve Aviram ben Eliav, the sons of Eliab. And the uh, on ben peleth ben reuven. Reuven is uh, Reuben. So Korah led all these guys, Dathan and Abiram, uh, on the sons of Peleth, and basi they're, they're basically the sons of Reuben. And he brought in 250 princes of the assembly. Hamishim umataim nesi e eda. Nesi e eda. Right, so he called 250 princes of the entire congregation and brought them in rebellion against Moses. They rose up before Moses. Moshe. So they rose up. Here the words Nasi uh, means prince or a leader or a ruler. Nasi. So we read there Nesi e Eda. Eda. That is the congregation, Nasi. And the word Eda means assembly or congregation. And it comes from the root Ed, means witness. Ohel Mo Ed, we'll talk about that as well. Now, uh, Korah, who is Korah? Right, so Korah was a son of, uh, a descendant of Levi. Levi or Levi was one of the, uh, 12 sons of Jacob uh, and his tribe became the priestly tribe and Levi had three sons Gershon, Kohath and Merari or Kehath in Hebrew Kehath and Merari and Kehath had four sons Amram, Izhar, uh, Hebron, Hebron, Uziel okay now Moses and Aharon and of course Miriam they're all the children of Amram. Amram's wife was Yocheved. Yocheved was the daughter of Levi, the earlier generation, but it probably she was much younger, perhaps, and Amram married her. Now, Amram's son is Moses and also Aaron, and therefore Korah is actually Moses' cousin, a son of Itzhar. That's what, who he was. He was the sons of uh, Kohath. And the Kohathite or Kehatim, Gershonites, Merarites were given their responsibilities in the tabernacle. Yet Kohath, Korah was contesting the offices of uh, Moses, especially the office of Aaron uh, for priesthood. That's the issue at hand. So Moses offers a test. He actually falls down uh, in, uh, in humility before them. Uh, when he Korah claims that uh, they have taken upon themselves authority, uh, which uh, of course was given by God, by Yishma Moshe, by Paul Alpanav, he fell upon his face. Right, and what happened? Why the bear El Korah, the El Kol Adatho, right, and he spake unto Korah and all to his company. Tomorrow, the Lord will show who are his, and he said, Lemor Boker. Who is holy, he will show. Those 
uh, and he will cause them uh, to come near. We'll look at these two words actually. Uh, Vayipol. Vayipol is the Vayitol form of this word. Uh, for the root, uh, we'll look at the root Nafal. Uh, it means and he fell. And so the root is Nun Fe Lamed Nafal. You can pronounce it, which means to fall. To fall. Uh, Katal would be Nafal means he fell. And uh, Vayitol, uh, sorry, in the Vayitol form is Vayipol. So that's the word Nafal. Oh, by the way, the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 6 are a derivative of this word Nafal. Okay. The second word we look at is Vehikriv. Vehikriv again is in the Vekatal form. Vehikriv is Vekatal, but this is in the uh, Hifil stem. Hifil stem, Vekatal conjugation. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what these are, please look at the verbs, um, how verbs are to be analyzed. I will give a link below. You can look at it and uh, you can learn what this Vekatal is, what is Vaiktol, what is Katal, etc. What are the seven stems, Kalnifal, Piel, Pual, etc. Uh, you, you know, I have explained all of that. Uh, so Vehikriv means and he will cause to draw near. It's quite a long uh, phrase here. He will cause to draw near. Because the root is uh, Kofresh uh, Beth, which is Karav, means to draw near. But because this is in the Hifil stem, it's a causative stem. And so he will cause, God will cause them to draw near. He Hikriv. Where he uh, here we have the root Karav. And from this word Karav comes the word Korban. Can you imagine? Kofresh Beth, it's the same word. Kofresh Beth. And, uh, you know, with the Nun, it, it is made into a, a noun. And it means an offering. But of course, what it means is that with, that which with, that which with you approach near to God. That's what it is. And that is an offering. So when you go to God, you go with an offering. And so that which you approach God with, that's the Korban offering. Okay. So let's move further. So what happened? The test, as I said, Moses said, God will determine who is holy, who is Kadosh. And so he told them to take censers. Zot asu Kehu lachem, you, you do like this, as I say. Machthot korach ve kol adatho. So he told all, you, all your company, take you censers, machthot. And he told them to put incense in it. Ketoret lifne adonai, before the Lord. Mahar, so which is tomorrow. Right, so ketoret. So these two words, machtah. Uh, is the singular. Machtot. Machtot is the plural. Machta is the singular, which means censor. Uh, it's not the censor as in the film censor, movie censors, uh, but uh, C-E-N-S-E-R, not S-O-R. <laughs> S-E-R, which is basically a reference to this kind of a vessel on the right, you can see. A uh, golden censer in which incense is put and uh, the smoke rises and they take it inside the holy place and do the service of God. So ketoreth is of course incense. There are different kinds of incense and this is one of the types of incense that was on a sale on one of the internet sites. So I put a picture here. It's supposedly called Jerusalem incense. Okay. So then what happened? The test failed. God did not accept their uh, incense offering and he sent a judgment. Earth swallowed Korah and his company. Vatiftach aretz et piha tiftach means patach. You know the, the this vowel patach means to open. The first vowel in Hebrew, patach, is to open. So, vatiftach means and it opened or when and she opened. Who opened she? Who is the she? Ha'aretz, the earth. Eretz 
become ha aretz, the earth, et piha, its or her mouth. Then she opened, who opened the earth, its mouth or her mouth. Vativla otam, and consumed, swallowed them up. Veet betehem, their houses. Veet kolha adam asher le kora veet kol har hush. All of them that appertain to them, all their goods, they were all gone. And they went alive. Chaim Sheola to Sheol, Sheol, that is the realm of the dead, they went. Right? And they perished. Vayovdu, Vayovdu, and they perished. Mitohakahal, from the congregation, from among the congregation, they perished. Right? So here we have the word Sheola, uh, that means to Sheol. So this last letter, He, is known as a directional he, um, and it means two words, sheol. So the word actually is sheol, sheol. Uh, you can have a full spelling with a vowel, or you can also have without a vowel here, like the dot on the top, which is a column on the aleph. Uh, here in this case, we have a vowel, column vowel, and then they add the he in the end here which is a directional he that is towards Sheol, but the Sheol word is here. And Sheol basically means the realm of the dead. That is, they go and die and their uh, their soul or whatever non-material stuff goes into uh, a shady place. Okay. And Vayyavdu, Vayyavdu, and they perished, comes from the root Aleph Beth Daleth. Aleph Bet Dalet, which is the Abad, means uh, to perish. Uh, and it is from that word comes the word Abaddon. Abaddon. So let's go. Abaddon, it is mentioned in Job chapter 28. It means destruction. Uh, it is a place, as it were, or a realm which causes people to be destroyed. Uh, we read of that in the New Testament as well. Um, uh, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So that is Abaddon. In Greek, it is called Apollyon in the book of Revelation. Anyway, so this word is found in the Hebrew Bible. Abaddon comes from the root Avad, Aleph, Beth, Dalet. Here we read Vayovdu means and they perished. Perish means destroy, destruction. Destructure. Destroy means to destructure. It is no longer the thing that it was before. So it doesn't mean it disappears completely. It basically loses its functionality. It is no longer that which it was before. Right? Okay, dogs. Now let's go on. Next one. Aaron's staff blossoms yields almonds. There was another test conducted because people complained. Said, oh, you have killed the people of God. Oh, okay. So... Uh, they had another test. God told them, okay, get all the uh, 12 leaders of the Israelites, get them to have the, uh, you know, the sticks, their, their staffs. Hamatot. Hamatot means the rods or the staffs. They place them before the Lord and the Lord will choose which tribe is it that he has chosen to be a tribe of priesthood. Vayyanach Moshe et Hamatot Lifne Adonai. Moses laid up the rods before the Lord. Be Ohel Ha Edut. Ohel Ha Edut. Edut. So it means uh, the tabernacle of witness or the tabernacle of congregation. And uh, Shekedim is the uh, almonds. That's the word almonds. Matta means uh, matta, matte, actually. Matte means a rod or a staff. Uh, Hamatot, the staffs in the plural. Okay, matte. Uh, in fact, the tribes are also called matte, actually. Uh, so it's uh, represented by the rods and the staff. Finally, the sons of Korah. So the, uh, the Korah and his company died. What happened to the sons? We read in the book of Numbers, chapter 26, a bit much, much later, 
ובני חורך לא מתו. ובני חורך לא מתו. And the sons of Korah did not, died not. They didn't die. The sons of Korah did not die. They did not join his company. And you know what, what happened? So what happened to them? Oh, they became very famous. In the book of Psalms, so many times we read about the sons of Korah. Lam Natseach Maskil. This is an instruction, Maskil. Uh, not instruction, you can say it is like a, uh, it, it, Maskil means, um, uh, it, 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 it is a sort of instruction, but it is like a, uh, it is like a prophecy or it is like an oracle, etc. Levne Korach, that is to the sons of Korah, for the sons of Korah. In Psalm 42, the last one perhaps I think is in Psalm 88, we read Shir Mizmor Levne Korah, song, uh, a psalm for the sons of Korah. And among them were Haman, Ha Ezrahi, Ezrahi, that is Haman the Ezrathite. There's another guy, Ethan the Ezrathite. Perhaps it's the same person. Haman ha Ezrahi uh, was one of the descendants with one of the sons of Korah. How do we know? Let's read 1 Chronicles chapter 6 verse 33. Hey, this reference 618 is actually the Hebrew Bible reference. In the Hebrew Bible, that is the Westminster Leningrad Codex, the numbering, chapter numbering, that is in the Jewish Bible, the chapter numbering, the verse numbering is different from the the regular Christian Bible people are used to. I'm showing the Christian Bible reference here, 633, but it actually is 618 in the Hebrew Bible. Now here, and these are they that waited with their children of the sons of the Kohathites, Haman the singer, the son of Joel, or Yoel, the son of Shmuel, Haman Hamashorer, Mashorer, Ham Hamshorer. Shir is the word we actually read. Shir means a song. Uh, in uh, in Arabic, uh, perhaps Urdu in India, I am familiar with this word. Shair means uh, a a songwriter or a po or a poet, uh, and Shairi means a poem or a song. So that's the same word, shir, here. And uh, ham shorer, ham shorer means the guy who writes the shir. So Heman ham shorer, ben yoel, ben shmuel. So he was a grandson of shmuel. Shmuel is Samuel. And Samuel's name is properly spelt in the King James Bible here with sh. Uh, most of the times it is S-A-M-U-E-L, but they have pronounced it correctly. They have spelt it rather correctly, Shmuel. So Samuel, the son of Elkanah of 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you read uh, the little Samuel who heard the voice of the Lord, that very Samuel, that prophet became a prophet. He anointed King Saul, he anointed King David, and his grandson is Haman Hamshorer, Hamshorer, meaning the singer, Haman the singer. And we read in the same passage, verse 18, 19, 20, if you read, Kohathite, Haman the singer, the son of Yoel, the son of Shemuel, son of Elkanah. And if you go further, again, there's another son of Elkanah, the son Ebias of the son of Korah. So the basically traced to the sons of Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi or Levi, the son of Israel, that is Jacob. So these guys go Haman the singer via Samuel and Elkanah all the way to Korah to Levi. The Levites, Lev Levitic, Levitical singers singing in the temple of God in the Samuel, sorry, in Solomon's temple. Uh, they were the guys who are actually some of them have written Psalms. Uh, Haman, Ethan and uh, Asaph, etc. Uh, they are wonderful singers and they were there appointed by David the king. That brings us to the end of uh, this video. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Click the bell icon and please do comment uh, and I will see you again in the next video. Until then, uh, goodbye.